Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. My name is Alyssa and today I have another amazing, super cool, fun project we're gonna do. Today we're actually gonna do some chemistry and did you know it was possible to turn milk into plastic? We're gonna do some background information. We're gonna go through the steps on how we are gonna create this unique form of plastic and in other, um, other parts of the world, it's actually considered a cheese. Let's jump into our background information and then let's get started on our project. All right, you ready? Here we go. Before we start our experiment of turning milk into plastic, we're gonna do some background information, um, a little bit on plastic, a little bit on some chemistry that goes into how this experiment works, as well as some fun facts about milk plastic. Now, some definitions we need to know for this experiment are casein plastic, which is plastic made from milk during the early 1900s to 1945 that was used to manufacture buttons, decorative buckles, beads, and other jewelry. Plastic, a material that can be molded into many shapes. Molecules, the smallest unit of any given thing. Polymers are molecules that are repeated over and over again in a chain. Monomer is a single repeat of the pattern of molecules in a polymer, and casein is a main protein found in milk. Now, a little bit of background on plastics. We're not going to go too, too heavy into this. Um, just, just a basic overview um, before we jump into our ex experiment. So plastics are a group of materials that may look and feel different, but can all be molded into very shapes. So think of the plastic water bottle you might use to bring back and forth to school, um, the plastic case that could be on your phone, um, even plastic um, utensils, um, so many different things, plastic grocery bags. So these are all considered plastics, um, but they all feel different and they all have different um, shapes as well. So the similarities and differences between plastic products comes down to the molecules that, compromise, that comprise them. So all plastics are composed of polymers or molecules that repeat themselves in a chain. So polymers can be chains of either one type of molecule or different ones um, linked in a regular pattern. So monomers can consist of just one type of molecule or several kinds of um, molecules as well. So I have a picture on the next slide that will kind of break down the difference between polymers and monomers and how plastics can be considered both um, and while producing different products as well. All right, so looking at our first picture here, we have a polymer um, a poly, polymer chain, and the monomer is actually just one pattern that's being repeated over and over and over again. So this top one looking at the pink, it's just circle patterns repeating. So that one circle is considered the monomer and the polymer is the whole chain together. Now, a monomer can also be considered a little longer, such as the bottom picture that goes diamond, oval, triangle. So all three of these different molecules are one piece of the pattern, and that's the part that gets repeated. So those three molecules are considered the monomer, and the polymer is the entire chain itself. So um, casein, plastic is actually very similar to just a single monomer repeating the same pattern. So it's going to mostly represent the first picture that we have at the top. Going into casein plastic, milk contains many molecules of a protein called casein. When milk gets heated and acid is added to it, this causes the pH to change in the milk. When the pH change causes the casein models to unfold and reorganize, it reorganizes into a long chain, which ends up curdling the milk. Each casein molecule is a monomer, and the polymer we make is made up of many of those casein monomers molecules hooked together in a repeating pattern. So the polymer that we end up picking up when the, um, the casein plastic ends up becoming that curdled milk is going to be able to be picked up and molded, which is why it's considered a plastic. Um, even though in some cultures and in some other cases, it could be considered a cheese because this is kind of how uh, cheese ends up being made. 
um, a little bit. This one's going to be a little bit more crumbly, a little more dry. And when it, it becomes super, super hard, once we start playing with it, um, we'll be able to see the effects of it once we jump into the experiment. So some fun facts about plastic milk include um, casein plastic was used to make fountain pens, backings for handheld mirrors, and fancy comb and brush sets. Queen Mary of England actually had some plastic milk jewelry that was made for her way back in the 1900s. Casein plastic is extremely environmentally friendly um, because it can decompose over time, unlike many of the many of the plastics we see today, which are based on petroleum or more petroleum products. Casein plastics were first manufactured in London in the in 1900. Now, for our experiment to get started, we are going to need a little bit more materials than we usually do. So we are going to need milk. I'm going to end up using whole milk because that's the milk I have in my fridge at the moment. Vinegar, I'll be ending up using uh, white distilled vinegar. Um, again, what I have in my house. We need a microwave safe bowl. So we're going to be using the microwave. A measuring cup, a regular bowl, strainer, paper towels, measuring spoon, a regular spoon, and some optional items for after um, we heat the milk and it gets into that more pliable forming stage, we can end up using some food coloring or cookie cutters to kind of make and shape the milk plastic however we would like. All right, so we have gone over our materials. We have a little bit of background on casein plastic and milk plastic. So let's get started for our experiment. Ready? Here we go. All right, everyone, so I have gathered all my materials here in my kitchen. Um, and again, before we start jumping into this experiment, double check with mom and dad that it's okay that you gather these materials. And because we are using the microwave, ask them it's okay that you, you use the microwave and we can still do this project. I have seen it done where people have actually heated the milk on the stove. So there's a couple different recipes out there for this. Um, the two main ingredients that we need is the vinegar, and I'm going to grab the milk out of my fridge right now. Um, so again, make sure we're double checking with mom and dad before we jump in. So you can, I've seen recipes where you can do this a lot for a lot of like plastic milk. I'm just going to do a little bit. So I'm just going to use, um, a small amount. So I'm going to take a cup of milk. So I'm going to take my whole milk that I have in my house and I'm going to pour a cup. And then we're going to microwave this for a minute and a half. So we want um, the best description I found of this. Um, as we're trying to heat it up, we don't want it to be boiling. Um, we want it to be almost like the consistency of hot chocolate. So it's like hot and warm, but not overly like burn your mouth hot. So I'm going to take my cup of milk. I'm going to put this in the microwave for a minute and a half. We'll wait for that to get ready. Um, and then once, so it did say to put it in a microwave bowl. The measuring cup I'm using is microwave safe. So I'm just going to add my, once I finish heating that up, I'm going to add my vinegar into that cup. And then once we add our vinegar in, we're going to stir it for a minute. Now, depending on the type of milk you're using, I've read that if you're using like um, 2% or 1% or even almond and skim milk, you might need to heat it up a little more or you might need to stir it a little more because the fat consistency is going to be a lot lower than what I have for whole milk. So whole milk has the most fat, most protein in it. Um, I end up having it because I have a little one at home and that's what she drinks. Um, so I might be able, so we'll see how the minute goes. If I need to stir it longer, I will. So you'll just, you'll just bear with me as I sit and stir <laughs> milk and vinegar. Um, so once we pull that out of the microwave and we start getting mixing, then we're going to end up using our strainer to kind of pull out all of the liquid, which again, will probably be a longer process, um, trying to get it as dry, um, as possible. I have read that if you wanted to use like different cookie cutters or, um, different food coloring to kind of make it a, 
a unique color, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to go with the basic white color and see how it turns out. And if it's a success, I might try it again later. All right, so that was my microwave. I'm going to go grab my milk. All right, so I have my milk. And then we are going to need four tablespoons. So this is just my tablespoon I have of vinegar. So I'm going to add four tablespoons into my milk. And we're going to start seeing the chemical reaction kind of right away. It's going to kind of start curdling the milk because of the acid and the pH level is going to change. So that is three. We're going to start seeing the, the protein and the fat kind of break apart. All right. So that is there. And now for the fun, we're going to just start mixing all of this around and it is going to start curdling. So again, this might not have been the best idea for me because this is pretty full. <laughs> so we are just going to mix, mix, mix. We're going to mix this up. And as you can see, it's already starting to curdle. So the fat and the protein is already starting to mix and break apart. Uh, let's see. Again, have paper towels on hand. Um, as you can see, I'm already starting to make a mess. <laughs> and we're just gonna keep mixing. Because I have some of it starting to spill over. So as I'm stirring this, I can already see that it is starting to break apart, but I wouldn't say it's like hard yet, so it's not um, super solid yet. So this is gonna take, I think it said it officially takes two days for it to fully dry out. Um, as we wait for this to get hardened, so give it a few more seconds as I keep stirring and mixing. So again, learn from my mistakes, use a bigger mixing bowl so you can really mix it up, really vigorously stir it up. Um, and then once we are have reached our minute, which I believe we have, we are then gonna use our strainer to then strain and separate all the liquid from this. So we are gonna take this and I'm just pouring this into. All right. So again, looking at this right now, I got a lot of liquid still in here. So this is where your paper towels are gonna come into place because you're really gonna wanna mix, you're really gonna wanna pull every single piece of liquid out from it. And I've also, in some of the directions, it actually said to just use paper towels. I'm using a strainer because it's, a, for me, it's a little easier to do. Um, and it pulls the liquid out right away. So I'm just gonna, oops, use a paper towel and just kind of push as much liquid out as I possibly can. I'm gonna grab another paper towel. Ooh. And again, make sure you double check with mom and dad because um, this is a little bit messy. Um, we are using a hot liquid. Um, so you just wanna make sure. All right. So I think I've gotten most of this out. So I think I'm gonna end up pulling, trying to scoop my, my plastic into a paper towel and having it get more dry. Oops. All right. Does feel weird <laughs> at the moment. So I'm just gonna have this come in here. Try to get all my little pieces. And again, there are recipes where you can make um, a much bigger amount of plastic milk. 
Um, and again, kind of looking at this, it does look like cheese. Um, I believe from what I read in the directions, I believe it is a, I could, um, do some research for me and double check and, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's called pan sear. And I think it's a type of cheese that's used in, or made in India, which is so cool. So they kind of refer this as, uh, cottage cheese. That's what um, usually cottage cheese is made with vinegar and milk, which I did not know that. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to add this into here. I'm going to take another paper towel and kind of clean up a little bit of my mess. And again, double check with mom and dad. So I have slowly collected all of my my cheese or my, my hard plastic. So this is going to dry out and it's going to get really, really hard. Um, so just kind of like in the pictures where we saw the, like the bubbles and the buttons and pens. So it's going to get that hard consistency, but we just got to make sure we get all the liquid out as well as, um, we let it air dry. So it will take about, two days for it to fully dry out and like become the hard consistency we're looking for. And again, if you have paints at home, you want to paint it and shape it into a heart or a cookie or a circle or make your own little button, I say go for it. Again, I'm just doing a simple white one. I'm just going to see how it goes. And then if it goes well and I have success with the experiment, then I might, uh, once my kiddo gets a little bigger, um, this could be definitely something I try with her later on, or maybe it's something she'll try at school. You never know. All right. I'm trying to slowly collect my, my cheese and it does feel really weird. It does kind of feel like cheese, but I can tell it still has a lot of liquid in it. Um, so I'm definitely going to need another paper towel to kind of get as much liquid out of it as possible. So again, mold it into however you see fit. And I'm just going to slowly keep pressing, pressing this. Whoops. Here, here. I'm going to so as you can see, I'm slowly just making a pile of stuff I'm going to clean up with my paper towels. So this is going to take quite a bit of paper towels. Um, it did say you could use like a cotton t-shirt or a cotton cloth to um, kind of help get some of the liquid out. Paper towels were just easier for me. I also do have some cheesecloth, which I could have probably done to help strain it. Um, all right, I'm going to grab more paper towels. So I, it's slowly... I'm slowly getting the liquid out of it and it's becoming, I don't know, it's not hard yet, but it's becoming a little more, um, a little more solid. <laughs> All right. So I think I'm just going to make mine kind of into a giant ball and kind of shape it and then I'll leave it overnight to dry and then we'll see how it comes out. All right, so as it's slowly, so it is going to feel a little more crumbly. It is going to look quite a bit like cheese. So if you wanted to do food coloring or shaping it into a solid piece, definitely could do that. Um, all right, so this is what I have. So I'm just going to leave it in a ball and I'm just going to leave it on my counter off to the side and have it air dry and see how it turns into a hard plastic. Now, I know this is one of the last videos we're going to have together, but I would love to hear how your results come out. I would love to see how you shaped your plastic. Did you have fun making it? Was it a weird texture when you touched it? Did you learn that 
This was a technique they used way back in the 1900s to make buttons, which is wild. <laughs> so let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this experiment, if you were able to get the experiment to work. And I can't wait to try this again with you guys. All right, guys, enjoy your afternoon and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.